good morning so in the last lecture we looked at different steps involved in catalysis and based on these steps we wrote down the equations and synthesized the rate equation the overall rate equation depending on which state which step is rate controlling so uh, it can be the chemical reaction which controls the rate or it can be the adsorption or it can be the desorption so there are three distinct steps which are nothing but adsorption chemical reaction surface reaction rather and the third one is desorption and we we written down an algorithm as to which one of these steps uh, like controls overall rate and uh, based on that how to derive the rate equation okay now uh, the adsorption step can be controlling it can be a reaction that can control overall rate or it can be the desorption that can control overall rate and the rate equation that we get is of the form say r is equal to some rate constants okay into concentrations the bulk concentrations okay it can be k dash cb for a reaction a in equilibrium with b right and in the denominator we are going to get an expression something like this this is one particular rate equation depending on what assumption i make probably the rate reaction rate of reaction on the surface to be controlling so this is one rate equation i'm just showing you the form of the rate equation it can be slightly different depending on which step controls the overall rate okay so so if you just closely observe this particular rate equation what you see is in the numerator you have something similar to what you would have otherwise got okay when the reaction was not catalyzed by the solid catalyst that means it was a normal reaction taking place in a homogeneous medium so this is an additional thing that comes in and what do you have here these are the adsorption constants or probably desorption whatever something to do with adsorption and desorption so the denominator that you are seeing here is because of the adsorption and desorption of the species or the components involved in the reaction okay because there is a competition for the empty or active sites for the reaction to take place so in a way these adsorbed sites are going to or the already occupied sites are going to be unavailable unavail available for the reaction to take place okay so this is this is how we interpret the overall rate equation that we get okay right but then of course this may change depending on the assumption that we make which step is a rate controlling step okay so we looked at different steps to arrive at this particular rate equation how to synthesize this rate equation okay but that is not enough because once we get this rate equation what is the guarantee that the rate equation is valid okay so in order to know whether the assumption that we have made are correct or not or the equation that we have got is right or not as i told in the last lecture we need to look at the experimental data we need to generate experimental data in laboratory and see whether the data fits very well in this rate equation if it doesn't then we'll have to go back and make another assumption and come up with different rate equation okay and see whether the data fits or data falls in line with the rate equation that we have got so in this today's lecture what we going to do is like we going to look at a simple example and we going to look at how the experimental data can be used okay to see the authenticity or validity rather of the rate equation that we are talking about okay so for that we are going to consider one example so let's go for a real example where like for example for uh, let, let's say for instance we have a dehydrogenation reaction say cyclohexane uh dehydrogenates to give benzene and hydrogen okay now this is cyclohexane let me call this a c benzene b and of course hydrogen so i'm going to denote my concentrations with uh, c b and h2 okay as an as an when i go ahead okay so let's let's first synthesize the rate law with certain assumption okay 
and, and then we look at the possible experimental data and see how we select finally the rate equation. Okay. Fine. So, now I am not going to really go through each and every step quite systematically like what we have done before, but quickly come up with the rate equations for three different cases when first the adsorption controls, secondly the de sorry the reaction controls and the third is the desorption control. Okay. So, let me first start with adsorption controlling. Before that let me write down the mechanism. Okay. So, I have C plus S giving C S right adsorption then C S gives B S plus hydrogen. Now, now it is very important step look at the way I have made an assumption here okay. chemical reaction what is happening here is the hydrogen is generated, but it is coming out immediately okay. it is not occupying the sites. Okay. One can make some different assumption here saying that C s plus s gives B s plus H 2 s that means H is H 2 or hydrogen is on the in the adsorbed condition. Right now, I am making an assumption which is quite similar to Euler ideal assumption where one of the components is not in adsorbed state. Okay, it does not have affinity for the catalyst okay, as far as adsorption is concerned and as and when it is formed it goes to the bulk. Okay. So, that is the meaning of this particular step chemical reaction. Okay. So, this particular component is always present in bulk there is no adsorbed hydrogen. Okay. Now, you may ask me why, why I have made this assumption. Okay, right now, there is no basis for this I have just made this assumption I am going to go ahead and see whether this is valid or not based on the experiments. Okay. If it is not valid then I will come back and make some other assumption. Okay. So, all possibilities are there, right? but I am just trying to tell you the meaning of or significance of this particular step that is the chemical reaction okay. and then the desorption that is B s gives B plus s. Right. Now, you know how to derive the rate equation if one of the steps is rate controlling. Okay. So, in the last lecture we looked at simple homogeneous sorry not homogeneous simple isomerization reaction A giving B reversible okay. and we said that chemical reaction was controlling and we looked at the rate equation. Today, let us derive the rate equation for adsorption controlling okay. and then quickly write equations for the chemical reaction and desorption and then look, look at the validity of these equations based on the experimental data. So, first we will spend some time deriving the equation for the case when adsorption controls. So, C plus S giving C S all right. So, rate of adsorption is equal to overall rate that is my assumption rate determining step rate controlling step slowest step is equal to K adsorption right into C C into C S minus K A dash C S C S right. So, this is the rate equation that I have got and depending on the stoichiometric coefficient I will have a sign here like what you do in writing any normal rate equation. Okay. So, I am writing a general rate equation here. Okay. So, let us go ahead. Now, in this particular equation we have bulk concentration C C but apart from bulk concentration, we have empty sites concentration, vacant site concentrations and the concentration of adsorbed species and these are the concentrations which are unknown and they will come from equilibrium steps. Now, what are the equilibrium steps here? The first step is of course, the reaction. Now, reaction is not the slowest step like what we did before. In, in this particular case, adsorption is slowest step, desorption and reaction they are they are equilibrium control or they are at equilibrium instantaneous. So, the reaction is C s giving B s plus hydrogen. So, adsorption controls the overall rate and these concentrations which are C s and C c s which are some which are the concentrations we do not know okay, they will be obtained from the equilibrium states and which are the equilibrium states here? 
the reaction chemical reaction which is now instantaneous earlier in our earlier example we consider reaction to be controlling here adsorption controls so reaction is instantaneous which is at equilibrium okay so the re reaction and desorption these two steps are going to give me this bulk sorry the adsorbed species concentrations and empty site concentrations so this is reaction equation cs in equilibrium with bs plus hydrogen now if you write equilibrium equation for this it is keq capital keq is equal to cbs ch2 divided by ccs okay now we can express cbs in terms of ccs here okay so let me just write equation 1 here i am going to use equation 1 later to get value of ccs okay right Similarly, I write desorption, which is again an instantaneous process, where you have B s that is benzene is going to get desorbed, right. So, this is adsorbed benzene, benzene in bulk and empty site. Okay. So, again the same thing, I can write K capital K D is equal to C B C S divided by C B S. So, C B S is equal to capital K D dash C B C S equation 2. Now, using equation 1 and equation 2, equation 1 and equation 2, I am going to substitute for C B S and C C S in the main equation that is obtained by adsorption to be the rate controlling step right so what i need is ccs okay now how do i get ccs from this equation ccs is equal to some constant into cbs ch2 right and from equation 2 you have cbs is equal to this so, what it means is C C S is equal to again K E Q dash K D dash C B C H 2 C S. Okay. So, I have got the expression for C C S which is to be substituted in the main rate equation the overall rate of the reaction this is the one c c c this is where i need to substitute for it okay so if i do that what i get is r0 that is overall rate is equal to rate of adsorption is equal to k a c c c s minus k a dash k e q dash k d dash c b c h 2 c s okay now, in this I do not know only C s rest all are bulk concentrations. By the way, now it all depends on what kind of reaction that I am talking about whether it is a gas phase reaction or liquid phase reaction. Okay. For the gas phase reaction normally the concentration is expressed in terms of partial pressures. Okay. If for the liquid phase reaction it is the concentration. So, right, right now I am just expressing all these in terms of concentrations, but if you are talking about gas phase reaction you can convert it to partial pressure. So, P by R T is equal to concentration fine all right. Now, you have this equation further side balance C S plus C C S plus C B S cyclohexane adsorbed benzene adsorbed is equal to C T. Okay. Now, C S what is CCS? CCS is equal to and CBS is equal to which we have already derived is equal to CT. Right? So, CS is equal to CT divided by 1 plus 
Okay, let me write again some constant here. Okay. C B C H two plus K B C B. Right. So this is I have just clubbed all these individual constants in K double dash. Right. So I got expression for C S. Look at expression; it's slightly different. Look at this term, which was not there before. Okay. Now it is adsorption controlling. That's why you have different terms appearing in the denominator. Okay. Try and observe the differences. Okay. Now I got the expression for C S. I'll substitute for C S in the main rate equation that I've got. So R O is equal to. K forward. Now I'm just giving you the for final form. Okay, you can because this is all ob obtained by clubbing all those constants, right? This K F, okay, which is function of K A and C T and so on. Okay, C C, that is concentration of cyclohexane, minus K F dash, or one can say K reverse, K backward, K B rather. Okay. C B C H two divided by one plus right so this is the final expression when adsorption controls right adsorption controls adsorption is a rate determining step okay adsorption is a rate determining step now this is one expression that i have got suppose i do the same exercise but then now with reaction to be controlling reaction to be controlling then i will get a different rate equation then i'll get a different rate equation and you can do this exercise on your own i am going to do it here i'll just write the rate equation the form of the rate equation it is going to be r overall is equal to r reaction is equal to some k okay into cc minus oh sorry cc minus k dash C B into C hydrogen. Okay, divided by it is quite similar to what we have done before. Okay, K C C C plus K B C B. This is when the reaction controls. So look at a difference. This was when adsorption was controlling. Look at a difference. The numerator is not changing much, but the denominator there's a difference. There's a difference, and we're going to exploit this difference to know, okay, based on the experimental data, which one is the right equation, okay. But the, it's not yet over. Now I'm going to look at a case when desorption controls, okay. Case when desorption controls. R O is equal to R D is equal to. So desorption controlling R zero is equal to R D is equal to some k right C C again the numerator look at this numerator is not changing C B into C hydrogen divided by now we'll have a very peculiar expression here. You have C hydrogen plus K dash C C plus K double dash C C and C hydrogen. Now you can derive this equation on your own. Okay. I'm just writing the final form of the equation because I'm going to make use of this equation later to see whether 
this is the right equation based on the experimental data or not. Okay. So, this is when desorption controls. Okay. So, I have three expressions when these three different steps are controlling steps. The first one is when adsorption controls, okay. adsorption controls that is this equation, then reaction controls this particular equation and when desorption controls this equation. These are three different expressions that I have got. Now, I want to know whether which equation is is valid in a real situation. Okay. So, how do I know this? As I said before, I need to ex do experiments in laboratory. Now, think of a situation you want to do experiments in laboratory for a solid catalyzed reaction. Okay. You have cyclohexane con getting converted to benzene and hydrogen. So, let us say it is a vapor phase reaction. I am using any hydrogenation catalyst, say nickel adsorbed on alumina, whatever, say plat palladium adsorbed on alumina. Alumina is a support, right? The polar support, and reaction takes place, right? Now, how do I do the experiments in laboratory? How do I get a rate a rate value for the rate? Okay. There are different types of reactors which are used in laboratory for solid catalyzed reactions. Okay. So it's quite similar to what we have already learned for simple reactions and normal reactions. Here we have a differential reactor. So, for example, you have a tube okay, in which you have packed the catalyst and the flow is taking place. Now, this particular length is very small. What does it mean? That means, there are no gradients along the length. So, it is like a differential reactor that is why it is called a differential reactor. Okay. Though it is a tubular reactor in that the catalyst volume that I am I am using is very small, okay. so that the concentration does not change drastically. So, if that particular volume acts like a CSTR where the concentration is uniform, the, it has an advantage because it is going to get me the rate equation for the particular concentration. The concentration change is not much, so I can assume the concentration to be the feed concentration at which the reaction is taking place. Okay. Anyway, that will be clearer later. Uh, so, this is a tubular reactor with difference or one can have a stirred reactor, a continuous reactor, one can have a fluidized bed reactor, but of course, typically like such reactors are not so common in, in laboratory. This is the most common reactor used in laboratory. One can have so, if suppose you are dealing with liquid phase, okay, uh, the, the reactants and products are in liquid phase, but the catalyst is solid. In that case, again I will have a slurry reactor, similar reactor. Now, this is a continuous, but I, I may have a batch reactor, okay, right. And but then I will have a concerned performance equation for the batch reactor and can evaluate the value of rate, can evaluate the value of rate, okay. So, this is how I can perform experiment in laboratory for solid catalyzed reactions. Now, in all these reactors I can use solid quite comfortably. Okay. In this case in the fluidized bed case you have to make sure that this particular flow rate should be good enough or high enough to fluidize the catalyst. So, all these reactors are going to give you some performance based on which you can calculate the rate. The fluidized bed and uh, CSTR type of slurry reactors are integral reactors and by differentiating the conversion versus catalyst loading plot, we can obtain the instantaneous rates and can calculate the reaction rate constants. Also, it should be noted that the differential reactor has a limitation as I said before that the conversion should be as small as possible. So, if the conversion goes beyond a particular limit, then probably the differential reactor will not work like a differential reactor and uh, the analysis will be incorrect. Okay. Now, let us get back to our example of cyclohexane dehydrogenation to give benzene and hydrogen. So, in this case, 
suppose I am using a tubular reactor, okay. here cyclohexane will go inside and a mixture of cyclohexane plus benzene plus hydrogen will come out. You may use some inert also here. Of course, which inert is to be used and all we will look at it because inert may have some effect, inert may get adsorbed on the catalyst surface. Okay. We will look at it separately, all right. but then we can do this experiment here to determine the rate. Okay. So, let us say I determine the rate for this particular reactor by changing the concentration of cyclohexane in the feed. Now, it is not pure cyclohexane, it, it you have the inert and let us make an assumption that inert does not adsorb on the surface. Okay. It is like hydrogen, okay. hydrogen of course, is not inert here it is a product, but like hydrogen there is another inert say argon or say helium right, or nitrogen for that matter, which does not have any affinity for the catalyst. So, what I am doing is in this particular reactor, I am passing cyclohexane along with that I have some inert also going inside. Okay. So, what so it gives me an opportunity to play with the concentration of cyclohexane. Okay. So, I can do or I can perform experiments at different concentrations of cyclohexane in the feed and get a rate for every concentration. All right. Okay. So, if I do this experiment, if I do this experiment, what I get is at different partial pressures or different concentrations of C C, what is the rate? What is the rate of the reaction? This is the rate that I observe, this is the rate that, that is the overall rate that we have derived the rate equation for. And this particular rate should fit very well in the rate equation that I am going to get. Now, C C versus R overall or all are observed. Let us let us say I am getting a train like this, I am getting a train like this. This is the experimental data. Okay. Now, I need to know whether any of those equations that I have derived falls in line with this experimental data or not. Okay. So, what is the nature here? Initially, it is a bit linear and then the slope is decreasing and it is getting saturated after certain concentration of cyclohexane in the feed which is sufficiently high, there is no change in the rate, it is almost, almost becoming constant. Okay. So, that is the general observation that I have. So, this is the experimental data observed. Okay. I am going to get back to this. Okay, I am going to get back. Let us observe our earlier rate equations that we have derived. Now, I have the equation when adsorption controls. What do I see here? If I change the concentration in the feed, okay, what is the rate? Now, there is a finite value for this, right? whatever is the concentration that I am doing the experiment with. Okay. So, there is some finite value here. Right. What is the feed concentration of benzene? 0. Reaction is taking place at the feed concentration. Remember what I said, the concentration is not changing much here. So, whatever rate that I am calculating here is at the feed concentration. So, suppose the concentration of cyclohexane entering is 50 percent the extent of reaction is not much, it is going to come out with say 48, 49 percent concentration of cyclohexane. Some, some benzene will form, some hydrogen will form, which will be very small depending on the extent of reaction, but this extent is small. So, that for all practical purposes, okay, I can assume that the reaction takes place at a concentration corresponding to the feed concentration. This is a very important assumption and it is valid. Okay. Provided this catalyst length that I am using is relatively small. Okay. So, what happens here? C C is some finite value say 50 percent. Okay. 
the concentration units of course. C B is negligible 0, C H 2 0, C B 0, C H 2 0. What does it mean? R 0 is equal to K F C C. And what does it say? It says that the rate is directly proportional to the concentration of cyclohexane, right. So, so what train will I get? I will get a train which is linear with respect to cyclohexane concentration in the feed. So, it is going to be like this C C versus R overall when adsorption controls this is a train that I would get. Is that a train that I have got in the experiment? No, my train was like this. So, what does it mean? It means that the rate equation that I have got by assuming the adsorption to be controlling is not valid here, okay? is not valid here. Okay? So, let us look at desorption controlling now. Okay? Let us look at the rate equation when we get when we assume that the desorption controls the overall rate. Okay. So, what is the rate equation that I have got? This is the desorption rate equation. What do I see here? C C is finite, C B is 0, I do not have benzene in the feed, I do not have hydrogen in the feed, this is also 0, okay. this is 0 this is 0, right? this is finite. So, R 0 or R observed rather overall is equal to k divided by k dash, because c by c c by c c that, that will get cancelled. right? So, rate is constant if the desorption controls rate is independent of c c. If the feed is pure, cyclohexane, pure in the sense there are no products present, it will be only cyclohexane in some inert medium, right. So, if I change C C and observe the rate and if desorption controls, what is the trend that I expect? I expect that so there is no change when desorption controls. I hope this is clear. As the concentration changes, the rate is unaffected because of this, because of this or rather this. Okay. It is a desorption of benzene that is controlling. So, the rate does not depend on cyclohexane concentration at all. So, is that my observation, my fixed bed reactor or other that tubular reactor, a differential reactor that I am using, what is the observation there? I am seeing that the rate changes in this fashion okay. and what I should get is this, not true or, on, or does not fall in line. Okay. So, what it means is from the experimental data that I have got, neither the adsorption is controlling alone, nor the desorption is controlling alone. Okay. So, let us look at a reaction now or let us look at the expression when the reaction controls the overall performance okay. or reaction is a slower step. Right. So, what is the expression that we have got? The expression that we have got is this when the reaction controls. In this particular case, again for the feed when there is no benzene and hydrogen present, this term becomes 0, okay. this term becomes 0, right. but then I get rate equation R overall is equal to K C C divided by 1 plus K C C C. Now, this is a very typical rate equation right? for very small values of C c, when C c is very small 
R 0 is this is very small R 0 is k into C C. Right? For small values of C C R 0 is proportional to C C is proportional to C C and what happens if C C is very large? If C C is very large then this becomes very large compared to 1. So, R 0 for C C to be very large R 0 is constant. The very typical rate equation that we have got wherein the nature would change depending on the concentration of cyclohexane in the feed. At very low concentrations, the rate is proportional to Cc and at large concentrations, the rate remains constant or it attains saturation, it attains saturation. Okay. So, how will it look like on the graph of C C versus rate? It looks like this C C versus rate overall or observed, it is almost constant here, it is linear here, and there will be some range where it is neither linear nor, nor constant, right. And this is when it is a reaction, surface reaction. Controlling the overall rate, right? And remember the data, experimental data that I had shown you before it falls in line with what one would get, right? By assuming surface reaction to be controlling, right? So. So, it is like you have initially linear and then going to saturation. So, what it means is the rate equation in this particular case for this experimental data is the rate equation when chemical reaction the surface chemical reaction controls the overall rate at least the nature is quite similar. Now, what do we do now later now nature is similar means I will try and fit this particular model or this particular rate equation in the data that I have got and get the values of parameters. Okay. Now, which are these parameters? The parameters are adsorption constants, rate constants. Okay. So, I get the rate constants, I get the adsorption constants by fitting this data. So, if you have this particular equation, so this is something that I obtained for certain values of the parameters. Now, which are these parameters? K, the adsorption constants, okay. then K f, K backward or K f dash whatever. So, all these are rate constants these two and these are adsorption constants. If the surface reaction controls the overall rate, then in the K by K dash is related to the overall equilibrium constant of the reaction and that can be determined independently. So, the unknown parameters are only three those are k c, k b and small k that is the forward reaction rate constant. So, these will be determined in such a way that my data fits well in this particular equation. Right? So, once you do that if, if, if the data fits well over a large range of C C, then you have got a right rate equation. And this data fitting is normally done by there are many methods of regression, okay. There is something called a least square me method, okay, where what we do is you have the experimental data, you have the experimental data, and you have the curve for certain values of parameters k, k f, k f dash right? and for every point there is some difference 
we try and minimize this difference. And there is a function called summation of the square of these errors. Why square? Because sometimes it is quite possible that this difference is positive at one point, this difference is negative at certain point. So, if you just go on adding these differences, they may compensate for each other and say that fine the overall total error is 0, but that is not correct. So, we have to square it, so that the magnitude is always positive, so that I get a better best fit. Okay? Fine. So, that is nothing but parameter estimation or regression analysis, which is called as, so the least square method is the best method to or other is a commonly used method to estimate the parameters and there are mathematical techniques, optimization techniques okay, which are used to calculate these values of parameters. Okay. Now, after doing all this, does it mean that you have got a right rate equation which will work very well? Now, there is one thing that we have not really looked at. What is that? You have just looked at the effect of cyclohexane concentration in the feed. Okay. We have not looked at the effect of benzene concentration, we have not looked at the effect of hydrogen concentration. Okay. There are some constants associated with benzene adsorption right, in the denominator. You would be able to determine them only if you have benzene present in the feed. So, after doing all this, you have to generate more data by doing some experiments with other hydrogen in the feed, benzene in the feed with certain proportion not negligible now okay? or both of them in the feed. Okay? So, doing all this, okay, you generate as much data as possible and see whether your rate equation fits or other it, it falls in line with the experimental data and that is a complete exercise. Now, I have just shown you three different rate equations here and said that fine possibly the reaction controlling mechanism may work, but in real situation things are likely to be more complicated where I need to make certain other assumptions to get different types of rate equations. As I said before, now I am assuming a single site adsorption, okay. there can be a dual site adsorption. I am assuming hydrogen to be present in bulk only, but palladium may have affinity for hydrogen okay, and it has. So, I cannot just make that assumption. So, I will have to assume that there is another adsorption step that is hydrogen. Okay. So, hydrogen is first present in adsorbed state and then there is a desorption for not just benzene, but hydrogen as well. Okay. So, it will become more and more complicated, but then if you want the right rate equation, you have to bear with these complications and finally, when you get a right equation, then only you can use it for the reactor design. Okay. Because ultimate aim is to have a proper reactor design for the given reaction of interest okay. and that will be valid over the range of concentration that I am studying. Before we go ahead to the reactor design, let us look at the effect of temperature. Now, I have not talked about temperature at all. Now, let us look at the rate equation that we get when the reaction controls the overall rate. Okay. Now, this is the reaction rate. Okay. Now, in, in this rate expression, I have several parameters. Okay. This is one parameter, this is another parameter and these are adsorption related parameters. Now, how will the temperature affect these parameters? Now, k is the rate constant, k dash is the rate constant for the reversible reaction. Now, these two are likely to be highly sensitive to temperature. Of course, it will have adsorption constants also, but it has the rate constant or these two will have the rate constants as well in them. Okay. See, I have got this by clubbing or other putting together many constants, there is the capacity C t also coming in picture. Okay. But in that, if you remember, okay, you have forward rate constant and backward rate constant also in this. Okay. And those are the constants which are highly sensitive to temperature. That is why this, these constants are highly sensitive to temperature. What about these constants? These are only based on adsorption. There is no rate constant here. Okay. So, ad adsorption constants relative to or compared to rate constants, these two are less sensitive to temperature. Okay, less sensitive to temperature, but it is quite likely 
that because of temperature or high temperature okay, adsorption will get affected. Now, you all know that if I increase the temperature adsorption is less favored and desorption is favored. Okay. So, the adsorption constants will go down and you may make an assumption that at very high temperature the denominator which is related to adsorption these two terms are negligible. What happens? If these two terms are negligible then you have in a denominator just one. So, this boils down to a normal rate equation which is similar to homogeneous catalysis. So, at high temperature you may see such effects. Okay, right. You can even change the temperature and generate tem data at different temperatures to get the hidden parameters here, which are the hidden parameters activation energy, frequency factor and so on. Okay. Right now, the parameters that I was talking about was only like forward rate constant, backward rate constant and adsorption constant, but then if you generate a data at different temperatures, you can get the activation energies also something that we already done at different temperatures you have 1 by T versus L n k or L n r 0 that is the initial rate. Okay. You have a plot like this okay. the slope gives you the activation energy and the intercept gives you frequency factor where the rate k that is the rate constant is nothing but a into exponential minus e by or delta e by rt right so i can get activation energy and frequency factor for both the rate constants forward and backward okay now both the examples that we have considered so far first isomerization and now dehydrogenation okay both the examples have considered the reactions to be reversible, but not necessary that the reaction has to be reversible. The re reaction can be reversible as well. Okay. So, the same expression or so the same methodology or procedure can be applied to irreversible reactions and one can obtain the rate equation. You can do that as an as a homework. Okay. Just take an example of A going to B, but now it is not reversible, it is just re irreversible reaction. Okay. Fine. So, you have a rate equation. After we get a rate equation, what do we do? We need to design the reactor. All right. So, I have told you the procedure to get a rate equation, synthesize the rate expression for certain assumptions and then validate it against the experimental data. This is the entire procedure that I need to perform in laboratory before I design the chemical reactor. Okay. And remember, we have not considered the external mass transfer effects, we have not considered the intraparticle diffusion that will come later anyway. Okay. But right now, I am just assuming that these are negligible and I have the rate equation. Now, how do I design a reactor? Now, the procedure is not much different from what we have done before. What do I do? Earlier, I have a CSTR, I have a CSTR. I write a rate equation F A 0 minus F A plus R A V is equal to 0. You have F A 0, F A here, right. And then in R A, I have minus K C A for irreversible first order reaction A going to B. And by knowing F A 0 for the required conversion, I get a volume that is my reactor design or for the given volume I calculate the outlet concentration that gives me the conversion. So, this is the exercise that I do. Now, what is going to change for heterogeneous reactions? We will have a similar thing except now we will have F A 0 minus F A plus R A and in most of the cases instead of V, we have W equal to 0. Now, what is W? Here it is a volume here it is the weight of the catalyst. Why? Because the rate now is minus possibly K C A divided by 1 plus 
K A C A plus K B C B something like this. If the reaction is reversible, you will have a, one more term here, right. So, instead of this, I have this, this is one difference. Another difference is instead of volume, I have W here, okay. Why? Because the rate constant here is per unit weight of the catalyst. The rate constant here is per unit volume of the reactor. Here the rate constant is per unit weight of the catalyst. So, this is the only difference. Otherwise, the entire exercise that I have done, whatever problems I have solved for homogeneous reactor, okay, similar procedure will be adopted for heterogeneous reaction. Remember, volume is replaced by the weight of the catalyst and the normal rate equation which is probably of the power law type is replaced by either Langmuir-Nichol wood or Euler radial whatever mechanism depending on whatever assumption I make okay a slightly complicated rate equation but the methodology or procedure remains same okay thank you